Hi, welcome to React Native JSI Explained. I'm Oscar. I'm a software developer from Bolivia, but I live in Germany. And I have worked a lot with React Native in the last few years. Now, React Native is going through a re-architecture. And this re-architecture means developers will have to learn a bunch of new technologies and even some uh, C++, which is why I created the first part of this guide which is the C++ guide for JavaScript developers. And now the time has come to explore the JSI itself. Now, before starting with the JSI, I would like to talk a little bit about the React Native re-architecture and what all the terms mean, because it's going to be very useful in the future. And it's also going to clarify a lot of the behavior that we're going to see in the next few lessons. So I want to start by talking about the React Native architecture. So before the JSI and the new architecture, this is more or less how React Native used to work. You have your JavaScript code and you have a bridge, which is responsible for translating all your information and all your function calls from JavaScript into the native side. So the bridge would be in charge of the React shadow tree. It would um, translate all your instructions, all your function calls to JSON, and it would communicate with the native modules. Now, you are probably aware that this bridge is fairly slow at some point, right? If you send a lot of data, if you do a lot of UI updates, the bridge gets overwhelmed quite easily because it needs to first translate all that information into JSON and then send that into the native side. From the native side, you need to uh, parse the JSON and then do the operations and so on and so forth. So you can see there's a lot of wasted effort in there. So the new React Native architecture tries to cut all of this by making the communication with the native side a lot more direct. And the main piece of this architecture is the JSI. Now, the JSI is not a React Native um, only feature because it's actually implemented on the JavaScript engine itself. That is, via a special implementation, you can communicate with the JavaScript side of things without any overhead. You don't have to serialize um, any information. You only need to um, call directly your C++ or your native code via the JSI. So before jumping even deeper into the JSI, I think it's important to talk about the new, all the parts of this new architecture. Uh, one part are is Turbo modules, the other part is CodeGen, and finally the JSI. So let's start talking about Turbo modules. So Turbo Modules is a new architecture for um, React Native packages. If you have been doing React Native for quite some time, you would remember before auto-linking was there, you would have to go into the native code, especially on Android, and initialize your own packages yourself, and then register them on your um, React class in the Android side of things, in the Java side of things. Then auto-linking came in, that simplifies that work quite a bit. And now the next step is turbo modules. So you can think of it as a way of creating the native packages. Now, besides a new API, what turbo modules is meant to do is to somehow, somehow um, allow for lazy initialization of packages. So right now, when your React Native app starts, all your native packages needs to be initialized at the same time. So if your application is large enough, um, every time you add a React Native package, the start time is gonna get slower and slower because all of them need to be initialized at the same time. With Turbo modules, this is going to be uh, lazily evaluated. That is, your native uh, package might not be initialized until the moment you need it or you call it. So this will improve uh, the initial loading times of applications. But not only that, Turbo Modules, it also offers a new API and a new way of creating these packages. 
and therefore it's quite important um, as we go dealing with the JSI that this um, the JSI modules are kind of meant to work together with turbo modules now the down part of this is that the turbo module specification or the implementation is not finished yet um, the JSI implementation is also not quite done so we're gonna be um, using a lot of workarounds which will hopefully disappear at some point once turbo modules is fully released um, and it will become a lot easier to release and create JSI packages. For now, we will have to make do and um, extract some, some of the objects that we need from the runtime in order to create a JSI package. So now that we have talked about thermal modules, one very interesting part as well is code generation. Um, again, if you have worked with React Native from the very beginnings, you can Remember that initializing a package involves a certain amount of native knowledge because you have to go inside the code of your application and initialize the packages and so on and so forth. CodeGen um, is meant to help you with this if you are not a native developer where you can define your interface for your package in Flow or TypeScript and then it's gonna generate all the boilerplate that you need to initialize your module. This has some benefits, for example, that um, keeping your native implementation and the API that you expose to the JavaScript side of things, they will be kept in sync, right? This, this is no longer a manual process where you write your native code on one side and then you have to expose your JavaScript API on the, uh, on the other hand manually but rather everything gets generated in one go so codegen will generate all the template for you and then you just have to go in and fill in your implementation it could be with c++ it could be with kotlin it could be with objective c um, it doesn't really matter but it's fairly important to understand that codegen doesn't generate native code for you or doesn't generate the implementation of your package CodeGen will only generate all the boilerplate that is necessary for the modules to work. And once again, Turbo Modules here is very important because CodeGen and Turbo Modules are working in unison. All the CodeGen, all the implementation of the CodeGen packages will generate Turbo Modules code. Finally, the last part that I would like to touch is the JSI itself. Now, as stated, the JSI is not a React Native only feature. It's implemented on the JavaScript engine itself, but uh, React Native is now gonna take uh, advantage of this new feature of the JavaScript engines uh, in order to get the most performance possible. Now, um, on the next few lessons, we will explore the JSI, how to create a JSI module, which once again, as I mentioned, once Turbo Modules and CodeGen is, um, are properly released, you might not need to care about that much. But the thing that you will need to take care of is how the JSI work, right? How do you create new JSI values? How do you register your functions into the JavaScript context and so on and so forth? That knowledge will still be useful after uh, CodeGen and Turbo Modules are released. So we will explore that in depth. Now, the final part I would like to talk is the fabric render. As we saw before with the old bridge, um, the old bridge is in charge of the shadow tree and the native modules. So even your UI updates would have to go through the old bridge, which at some point, even though you're rendering native components, the bridge becomes the bottleneck in your application. And fabric takes advantage of all of these new pieces that we talked about, about turbo modules, about CodeGen, about the JSI, and implement the render of your React code into this native, into a more native version of um, a renderer, right? So Fabric is supposed to blow past the previous implementation of React Native Renderer by directly cutting a lot of the corners by using the JSI um, and it's supposed to give you a lot more performance. Now, Fabric itself um, 
it's about to be released on the latest React Native version in 0 0.65. There, uh, it's already been shipped and you can already turn it on. It's not complete though. Some of the APIs are not finished and it could crash and can crash if you use certain functionality of React Native, but it will be here very, very soon. Um, great, so that's it for the overview. Uh, next up, uh, we will be talking about creating a JSI module. As stated, not, um, not all of the parts of this new architecture are released, namely Turbo modules and CodeGen. There is still a work in progress. So we will just focus on creating a module on our own and making sure that it starts and we can call our own JSI code. Thanks a lot for watching and please consider subscribing.